All right, so we're gonna draw our baby sleeve real quick, okay? So turn your paper over, draw a swooping line like that. This is the lesser curve. Lesser curve. If there's a lesser curve, there must be a greater, greater, curve. greater curve. These two make up your stomach, yes? Uh -huh. There's a big arch up here, that's the louder diaphragm, which is a muscle or what? Breathing. Breathing. How important is it to breathe? Very, very important. <coughs> There's a muscle at the bottom here called the pylorus. Pylorus, pylorus, pylorus. That lets food in and out. Okay? <coughs> your esophagus comes down, turns into your stomach. That area is called the what? G junction. Gastroesophageal junction. G E J. There's a big sheet of fat that runs all around here. That's called the momentum. Momentum. Very good, very good, very good. There's a big purple organ up here called the liver. What's the problem with the liver? It bleeds. It bleeds. Another big purple organ here. What's that called? Spleen. Spleen. What's the problem with the spleen? It bleeds. It bleeds. Why are we doing OptiFast? To shrink the liver. Shrink the liver. Shrink the liver. Shrink the liver. What happens if I get in there and your liver is too big because you didn't stick to the fast? You will stitch us back up. Surgery is? Canceled. Canceled. Don't cut you open. Close you up and you get to do it right the next time. So how important is it to stick to the fast? Very important. Very important. Very important. Over a thousand surgeries now, I've only had to do that on two cases. So... It's good. Most of the time I don't have to use a liver retractor. Okay, so the first step of the sleeve is to do what? Disconnect the omentum. Nice. Disconnect the omentum. Did I say remove? Nope. No. no, that's a bigger surgery. Disconnect the omentum. Okay, and then about five centimeters from the pylorus, I have my staple gun, and I staple all the way up to the GE junction. Staple gun fires how many rows of staples? Six. 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 Cuts in the middle. So three rows of titanium staples stay where? In you. In the sleeve. And three go where? In the specimen. Specimen. Why is it called a specimen? It's removed. Removed. Repeat after me. No moss. No moss. That means no more. <laughs> <laughs> What percentage of your stomach is removed? 80%. 75%. 80%. Yes, 75%. 80%. Do you want it too tight? Some people go, Dr. Wong, make mine real small. No. 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 Why not? Because You'll be miserable. Can't eat. Do you want to make it too big? No. Dr. Wong, it's only half my stomach. What happens if I take out only half? You won't lose weight. You won't lose weight. So it has to be just right. Yes? Yes. So what happens to the specimen? I take it out and do what with it? Take a picture of it. That's right. <laughs> take it home, make purses out of them, <laughs> bedazzle the shit out of them, <laughs> sell them on Etsy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It goes to pathology. They look at it. That's how I have found the six stomach cancers. There's six now. Six, six now. Just found number six last month. Dang. So now that leaves you with a skinny tube of stomach shaped like the sleeve of my jacket, and that's why it's called a sleeve. Got it? Yes. Okay, so real quick, we're going to talk about complications. And this is going to be a short talk because Dr. Vong doesn't believe in the law of attraction, so I don't like to talk too much about complications. The number one complication we worry about with the sleeve is what? Leak. Leak. Where will it leak? Up here, yes? Yes. Okay, if you get a leak, will you feel good or bad? Oh, yeah. Sort of bad or real bad? Real bad. You'll be very, very sick, so you're gonna know you have a leak, okay? If you get a leak, what has to happen? You stay in the Rush hospital. Emergency. You're gonna go to the emergency room, I need it back to the operating room. You're gonna be in the hospital how long? For a long time. Yes, four to six weeks in the hospital. Be prepared. So. Everyone repeat after me. Do not get a leak. Do not get a leak. Question for you. What's the best, now pay attention, what's the best way to minimize your risk of getting a leak? Listen to who? Listen to Dr. V. Listen to Dr. V. Plug and play. Follow the formula. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't try to outthink me. You have a thousand sleep brothers and sisters who have already been through this. I've had one leak in my career. It was the first 25. 
for the last thousand, we've been doing good. Who wants to keep that track record going? Yes. So do what I tell you. Watch the videos, follow your food calendar, etc. If you're a patient watching on the video, you just follow your surgeon's instructions. But my patients, I'll do what we tell you. Come to group so every single week so I can see you and know you're doing good. Does that make sense? Because a leak is a major, major complication. Major. Okay? So real quick now. Number two, you can also bleed. Bleeding is a complication. Where can you bleed from? Liver, spleen, staple line. You're disconnecting from your momentum. Your incisions can bruise real bad. The joke in surgery goes like this. Don't worry, all bleeding eventually stops. <laughs> uh -huh. <clears throat> but why do you bleed? Because it's surgery and we also give you blood thinners. What, Dr. Vong? You're about to do surgery on me. Why are you giving me a blood thinner? The answer is what? Prevent clots. Prevent number three, blood clots. What's the problem with blood clots? They travel. Nothing unless they travel. To what? Your lungs. Your lungs. And what's that called? Pulmonary embolism. Yes. P-E. Pulmonary embolism. What happens if you get a pulmonary embolism? Not good. So this actually, DVTs, deep vein thrombosis, is actually the number one cause of death in, in bariatrics. Of death in bariatrics. So. How important is it after surgery to walk in the hallways? Very important. Where are your SCDs, your little leg coverings? Very important. How important is it to walk when you're at home? Very important. How important is it to not go on long plane rides and car trips? Super important. Because that's how you get blood clots. Got it? Yes. Okay. That's number three. Number four. Your sleeve can also be twisted. That's a problem with a surgeon, doing a twisted sleeve. I've never had a twisted sleeve. Sounds like an 80s rock band, you know, like twisted sleeve. <laughs> oh my god, we got twisted sleeve. No, no, no. Alright, so you can have a twist in your sleeve. Now this is serious because if, you're, if you end up with a twisted sleeve, the only way to fix it is to convert to a gastric bypass. Mm. Mm. Now, if your heart was set on a sleeve and somehow you ended up with a gastric bypass, even if the bypass was made perfectly, what are your chances your mind's going to be right for success? No. Not as good because it's not the surgery I really wanted. You got it? So your brain does crazy stuff to you. The best thing to do is to avoid this sort of stuff. Number five, we had twisted sleeve. You can also get too small, a stricture. A stricture usually happens in this area right here it's too small usually what happens is a surgeon made it too tight that's why you don't want your sleeve too small you can also get a temporary stricture from eating the wrong stuff too fast and keep pounding on that baby does that make sense that's why it's really important for you to eat really slowly chew your food sit on your hands Listen to the baby. If the baby doesn't like bread, what should you not be eating? Don't eat bread. Don't eat bread. If your baby doesn't like steak, what should you not order? Steak. Don't order the steak. But it's ground beef, really small. I thought it would go down. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you get a stricture, now I have to do an EGD with a balloon dilation. So I have to put a scope down your throat and pop it with a balloon. It might take more than one, one dilation. Now, if it's just because you're eating the wrong stuff, you can usually get, put you back on liquids and Optifast, and that usually gets better, okay? Stricture. Now, that takes us to the last complication, stretching. Some people on Facebook go, Dr. Vong, you mean you can stretch out your sleeve? Mm. Like, yeah, where you been? <laughs> no one ever told me that. Yes. Now, is this the truth? Yeah. Stretching is your actual number one fear with your sleeve, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, y'all worried. I'm going to stretch out my sleeve. Right? Yeah. Question, how do you stretch out your sleeve? No. So repeat after me. One bite too much. That was terrible. Repeat after me. One bite too much. Over a couple of years. Which means it's a very slow process. You don't know you're doing it to one day you can eat too damn much. Make sense? 
So everyone's always panicking, like at their three month visit. Oh my god, I think I stretched up my sleeve already. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. Trust me. It's all right. Okay. So first thing we're gonna do is throw our gang sign real quick. So we got new people. Left hand up. Left hand up. Find the little bone between the girls. Put your left hand there. Come on, baby, left hand. Left, left the other left hand. Come on, let's And take the right hand and put it at the bottom. Okay? That's our gang sign. Look around, who screwed it up? So this is the proper orientation of your sleeve. It goes, you see how it goes this way? See, that's your gang sign. Two fingers wide, two fingers long. Now show the palm of your hand. After surgery, you're gonna put how much food on your plate? Two by two. How much food on your plate? Two. Palm of your hand. Why the palm of your hand? Now take your two fingers, put one, two, one, two. Was it the size of your palm? Perfect, one, two, one, two. So that's the size of your surgery. Your sleeve, baby, the size of the palm of your hand. You got it? Yes? Yes. So. If you don't want it to become four by two, <laughs> eat slowly. Use the right foods. Chew your food well. Be very patient. Sound good? You guys like to talk? Yes. Good? Excellent. You guys want to hear a rant? Yes. We're going to do a rant today. Dr. Vong here. If you like this video, I hope you will come learn from me live in person at my first ever Dr. V Weekend Workshop. I'm calling it Unleash the Sleeve Within. All right? So it's in Albuquerque, March 23rd through the 25th. There's a link to it below the video. I hope to see you there. Cool? Bye.